Good afternoon, everybody. We are here with a Diamondback Terrapin to talk about a new ruling with uh, FWC and what that means for Diamondback Terrapins and crabs, blue crabs in the area. Um, so uh, here we are at Science Hour uh, along the Escambia River. I'm here with my colleague, this is Carrie Stevenson speaking, and I'm here with my colleague Rick O'Connor with the Escambia County Sea Grant. How's it going, Rick? It's going good. Good. It's going good. Good. So uh, tell me, what is this new uh, ruling with FWC? What does it mean for people who live and fish along the uh, shorelines here? And, and what do we need to know? Yeah. Well, this is kind of what it's all about, actually, is this little animal here. This is, for those who have not uh, heard of a diamondback terrapin, this is a diamondback terrapin. Uh, they are in the same family as most of the pond turtles. They're about the same size, but you can see one of the big differences is the skin color. They've got a light colored skin with black speckles. Most of the pond turtles have very dark black skin with yellow stripes or patches, things like that. So that's one difference between them and their cousins. And the other one is they like environments and habitats like this. They're a brackish, so they're the only brackish water turtle in the United States. And so they're found in salt marshes and mangroves across the state. So this is what it's all about, and people are starting to hear a little bit about this new ruling that has to do with uh, crab traps and the terrapins. It's uh, been coming uh, effective March 1st, uh, just a couple of weeks from now. So you know, we're here to answer some questions about that and let you know more information about it as well. Okay. So what is this new ruling, and, and why do we need it? Okay, well, the ruling itself, there's two rulings. They both passed in December of 2021. Uh, the first ruling, and both of them, all of them have to do with the conservation of this animal. You have to understand that the, the range of the terrapin is the entire east and gulf coast of the United States. But in Florida, the abundance of the animal is much lower than it is in the Chesapeake area. And so uh, FWC, being a native Florida wildlife creature, uh, FWC does have the mission of trying to conserve these. And since our abundance is low, anything we can do to try to help sustain the populations we have is things to be considered. There are multiple things that are threatening the conservation of terrapins. Uh, one of them has to do with uh, taking these as a pet. That has become actually a big problem in our state. And so ruling number one, which went in effect March 1st last year, is that you can no longer possess a diamondback terrapin without a permit from FWC. We do have a permit for Shelly. Her name is Shelly which is a great name for a turtle. Uh, so that is ruling number one. That is already in effect. So if you have a terrapin, you do need to get a permit uh, to keep that. The other one has to do with this. Uh, being a brackish water turtle, they have a habit of swimming into crab traps. They are carnivorous. They feed on shellfish, uh, and they have a habit of going into crab traps. And being reptiles, of course, once they get in here, the way these things are designed, you're not getting out. Uh, they drown. So incidental drownings in crab traps has become a problem. It's a bigger issue up in the Chesapeake, to be honest with you, because the animals are a lot more abundant. Any of you who are from the Chesapeake area probably know that the blue crab fishery in the Chesapeake is number one. It is a huge issue in the Baltimore, Virginia area. And anything that would impact that fishery is going to be a problem. They have found as many as 40 terrapins in one crab trap in Virginia. And so if you've got that many turtles in here, then obviously you're not catching crabs. And so both the researchers, the nonprofits, and the crab fishery up there started playing around with some kind of device that would keep the terrapins out but not impede the crabs. They call this thing a bycatch by reduction device, BRD or BIRD, the original ones were made out of metal. They're now made out of plastic. And they have been used on crab traps up there for several years now. But as we move south and the abundance of the animal uh, uh, dis declines, uh, it just now is coming into action here in Florida. So uh, starting this year, we will now have to put these on our crab trap. I will mention the ruling says the opening or funnel cannot be larger than six by two inches. So in the future, crab traps will be built to those specs, and you won't need this. But the old crab traps, you will. Okay. So how do you get one of those BRDs, birds? And well, these things, uh, we have them right now. The FWC gave about 20,000 of them to uh, Florida Sea Grant. 
So what you do is you call your local county extension office. If they've got a C grant agent in the office, they have a case of these and they're free. You'll need one for each funnel. This particular crab trap has two. Some crab traps have four openings, so you would need four. So make sure you get plenty. Uh, if you live in a county that does not have a C grant agent, contact your county extension agent there and they will direct you to the closest C grant agent to you. Is this for every crab trap? This or? is for all recreational. Good question. Okay. This is only for recreational crab traps and all recreational crab traps in Florida. I already have one question. Does, does this include the Florida Keys? And, and it does. But it does not include the commercial fishermen right now. Okay. Will that change for commercial? So they're in discussion. There's uh, some issues and some good arguments from their side as to why. The thing about the terrapins, they usually live right up here in the marshes. She will go out into the open bay to look for a sandy beach to lay her eggs. And when she does that, she stays very, very close to shore. Many of the commercial guys are fishing farther off the beach, several hundred yards in some cases. So their traps are not necessarily where the terrapins are going to be. Um, and again, with our abundance, it's really low. They don't catch them as frequently as they do in Virginia. So FWC and the commercial industry are still having discussions on how that will roll out for them. So when does this officially become law? Officially, it becomes law or it goes in action March 1st, 2023, a couple of weeks from now. Let's see. Uh, if anybody out in Facebook land has any questions, feel free to, to put them in the chat. I'd be happy to answer uh, questions. Um, I don't see any right now. Rick, can you show us, compare that BRD to Shelly and the size? Yeah, so you can kind of that's see how a good, that works. yeah, that'd be a good thing. And actually what we find is it's usually the female. Shelly's a female. Females are a little bit larger than the males. So uh, what they find is it's usually the females that go in. Or actually this is kind of the idea of how it would work on the crab trap. She would try to get through here. Now, again, without that, actually you see she's trying to get in there. Mm -hmm. um, without that BRD, she would easily get in there. And if there's bait in there, she's certainly she's be going to after that. It. Yes, yeah. she's going to go after that. And the males who are a little bit smaller would follow her. Mm -hmm. uh, but the argument is that if you can keep her out, you're going to keep the guys out. So that's the size ruling. I will say some of the BRDs, if you got these things from the Chesapeake, these are actually four by two. The one I got in my hand. Okay. In Florida, you can have six by two. So be sure you get a six by two. Any other questions you can think of or anything else somebody should know? They nope, are, will I, they be available at, at uh, bait shops or places? Uh, actually, what's products, happening, or? they're all going to the Sea Grant agents at the moment. FWC is not going to be distributing. We're kind of doing that for them. But some of the Sea Grant agents in the counties are taking them to the bait shops. Okay. I know one brought it to one of the local universities already. So if you are a bait shop owner or in sell crab traps and want some, same deal. Just contact your Sea Grant agent. And if he runs or she runs out, we can we can get more. FWC will keep supplying them. Okay. Now, where might somebody see a diamondback tariff in, in Escambia or Santa Rosa County? Where do we, where they Yeah, are they? well, I work with the uh, Panhandle Tariff and Project, uh, um, the citizen science volunteer for that. And we have found them in every estuary between here and Apalachicola. Uh, they're very secretive. They tend to go to places where people aren't that often. Uh, but they hide up in the marsh. You'll see their heads pop up. You'll just kind of look out there, and you'll see a white head pop up, and you'll know they're there. Uh, and, again, they go to sandy beaches to try to find a place to lay eggs. And that's actually a couple other conservation problems. In addition to the removal for the pet trade and the crab trap issue, uh, we are losing nesting beaches around the state. And, of course, sea level rise may even exacerbate that a little bit. But um, in those cases, in other parts of their region, what they've done is they've actually gone up to like the side of a highway uh, looking for a high dry ground to lay eggs. So roadkill becomes an issue. Yeah. We haven't seen as much of that in Florida as we have in Georgia and Virginia, but uh, that is another potential threat that we'll have to address later. So yeah, they got some things going against them. Okay. Well, they're nifty little critters. They are. Mighty beautiful. Well, thank you, Rick. Sure, uh, sure. Tell us about our next Science Hour in March. We've got another speaker. Yeah, yeah. Our next Science Hour will be March. It will be at the 
Navarre Beach Sea Turtle Conservation Center on Navarre Beach itself. We will be with Kathy Holmes, the owner and director of that program. We'll be talking about the center. They have terrapins there as well. Of course, their focus is sea turtles, but they've got a lot of other things going on there as well. So we'll spend we'll spend our science hour with them. Awesome. And pro tip, if you see one of these guys, it's not a sea turtle. Do not <laughs> drop it in the Gulf. No. It wants to be yes. <laughs> in the bay. They'll be okay for a little while in full strength seawater, but they don't want to be there. So, yeah, you want to put them in the bay. Excellent. All right. Thanks, Rick, for your time. Sure. Thank if you. If you have questions, contact your local extension office.